Welcome all to the November 2020 episode of IGN C64 Roundup, your concise guide to some of the recent events within the Commodore 64 scene. Let us begin with some notable news items. The Wildwood is an ambitious gaming project by John Henderson, where he is out to create one of the most beautiful looking games on the Commodore 64. Wildwood is a story-based platform game with a multi-directional scrolling and adventure elements. The game sees you play the role of a young hare who has to navigate through moonlit fields, ancient ruins, cavernous warrens and creepy graveyards on your way into the Wild Wood. There is no doubt that Wildwood appears to be a passion project for John and that every care is being taken to ensure that his vision for the game becomes a reality. As we can see from this moonlit fields level, the game truly looks breathtaking and features multiple layers of smooth parallax scrolling giving off a good illusion of depth and pace. Can the game provide gameplay to match its graphics? Well, we'll have to wait until mid to late 2021 before we find out. Citronic Software has officially announced that they will be releasing the disc edition of MW Ultra in a collector's edition box set and premium plus edition. The Citronic Software version features the great looking alternative cover art provided by Trevor Story. Another upcoming Citronic Software title is Battle Kingdom by Icon64. The basic premise to the game is that there is a princess that needs saving and it's up to you to go around the buildings within the kingdom, seeing off enemy characters and locating fragments of a master sword. Once all the pieces have been found, you are then set to go into the castle and do battle with the dragon guarding the imprisoned princess. Once you've completed the level, you get to do it all over again but with more pieces to find and more challenging end level dragons. The game is currently in the early stages of external testing. Protovision has had a busy year and they are currently in the process of preparing the release of Soul Force by Sarah Jane Avery. Featuring 20 levels of fun horizontal blasting action, Soul Force is set to be Sarah's strongest C64 release so far. On screen right now is an exclusive clip of the first level. Each level will have its own distinct graphical theme and soundtrack and will feature plenty of great parallax scrolling. This one is not to be missed. Soul Force will be released in cartridge and digital formats with pre-orders expected to go live very soon. A game that is 30 years in the making, Outrage is expected to get a full release via Protovision and Citronic Software in the next month or so. The game was set for commercial release in the early 90s when the original publisher pulled out of the C64 market. After many years passing, Protovision secured the distribution rights to Outrage, but its release has been delayed for a very long time as the game needed further refinement to get it ready for commercial release, and resources to undertake this work without full access to the source code has been limited ever since. Well, development looks to have finally been completed, and the game is now ready for release. The 2021 installment of the Zap64 Annual is currently available to order via Kickstarter. The publication is sure to provide its usual quality feature articles and game reviews, but what I'm most interested in is the Arcade Days perk. Arcade Days is produced by Icon64 and sees you trying to become the Arcade King by completing 18 mini games contained within. Initially available in cartridge or cassette format, Arcade Days is likely to receive a general disc and digital release via Citronic Software in 2021. Antonio Savona has provided the community with another work in progress video on his upcoming title, A Pig Quest. The video shows more of the game's fighting mechanics, highlighting some of the armour and weapons available, along with showcasing some classic platforming elements and environmental interactions. The game is a visual beauty that now includes pixel rain and is looking to provide a very solid gaming experience. A Pig Quest will be published by RGCD in 2021. Boba Games is bringing Cynthia in the Cybercrypt to a physical cartridge release by the end of November. Cynthia, developed by Eleanor Burns, was a submission to the Shoot 'em Up Construction Kit 2020 competition, which it consequently won. That's right, this platform game is based off the Sea of Platform Engine. We already showcased the game back in January 2020 and found it to provide a good arcade adventure experience. Boba Games has something special planned for the physical release as the cart PCB will include some impressive fibre lighting effects. Well, it's about time we show some appreciation to the demo scene within the RGN C64 Roundup. So let's debut this segment with Fairlight's release of 2600, a graphical homage to the Atari 2600 box art. 
This condensed footage of the collage demo shows off some seriously impressive pixel art skills by the Sarge, and they all look simply wonderful. We all love a bit of juicy rumour tidbit, so here's one you might be interested in. As there is demand for Zeta Wing to receive a physical cart release, Arjun hears that this is likely to occur in 2021 once ProDivision gets its immediate commitments out of the way. But could it be that the game gets bundled with Sarah Jane Avery's first two C64 game releases as well, Neutron and Santron? Alright, time to look at some new releases. Starting off with Showdown by Badger Punch Games. Showdown is a one or two player action shootout game. You play as a cowboy out to win a gunfight. The first one to knock down the opponent five times is the winner of the duel. This is quite a fun game that has a hidden layer of strategic depth to it. Not only do you need to take care when reloading bullets, but you can also use exploding boxes to your advantage as long as you don't blow yourself up. Showdown has a potential to be a very good one player game if a story narrative is added to the game where your cowboy could visit different locations to duel with different types of enemies and have access to different type of weapons. Neptune Lander Elite by C64 Mark is inspired by the classic Lunar Lander game. Become one with gravity as you try to master thrust controls as you navigate across 40 obstacle filled caverns. To get to the landing pads, you'll need to dodge lasers, navigate through EMP zones and slide through moving doors while making good use of warp tunnels and bonus pickups as you go. This is a very good implementation of the genre, but it's also worth noting that some might find it a little bit too frustrating to play. If you're thinking that there was going to be an IGN roundup without mentioning Richard Bayless, then think again. Richard has released a single screen score attack game called Death Saw Challenge. Your task is to guide Blue Blob Creature around the dungeon. At the start he is all alone, but after every 15 seconds a Death Saw enters the dungeon and you simply need to keep Blue Blob alive for as long as possible. Retro Games Limited has released a firmware update for the C64 range of emulator devices. The most notable addition are the two new generation C64 titles added to the game carousel. The first is Barnsley Badger, a Monty Mole inspired platform game which sees you guide your badger around a graveyard environment picking up gold coins. There is quite a lot of old school charm on offer here and the graphics and music are quite good. The second title added is Solus, an arcade adventure where you need to help an entrapped beast find his soul so that he can be restored to King as he once was. This game has not aged well as newer titles from this genre provide a much more immersive and rewarding gaming experience, but still it's worth a try if you have not played the game before. Top Hole Golf by Matthew Clark is a golf sim game in the guise of a leaderboard golf. The game is still in the preview phase with the final version of the game intending to provide a total of four courses and include stroke play. The first thing I want to say about this, woohoo, finally a new sports game for the C64 and it plays quite well. The swing mechanic is intuitive, left right to set the direction of your shot 
up and down to set the club you want to use and then press and hold the fire button to set the power and then one more click to set the straightness of your shot. Putting is just about setting the direction and power. I really enjoy the animations taking place in the distant environment and the overall graphical representation of the game is quite good. Despite it being a preview version containing some glitches, the game is more or less completely playable as you can play a full round of 18 holes. He's hoping that Matthew can muster up enough motivation to complete the game. Protovision has had its development team working on enhancing Planet X2 in cartridge format featuring more refined graphics and music capabilities. Planet X 2.1 is a real-time strategy game where you can play across 14 different maps with the aim to destroy the alien enemy bases before they destroy yours. To do this, you'll need to build factories, robot workers and tanks, while also extracting resources, building bridges and battling alien scouts. The game has multitasking capabilities and also contains savable achievements. RGN recently showcased a preview version of Planet X 2.1 and the final version of the game shown here is almost the same except that the fonts and panel dividers are different. You can order your copy of the game from Protovision. Antonio Savona has released version 1.1 of Boxy Moxie, which adds on 20 new levels set within a space station theme. Boxy Moxie is a slide puzzle game where you must manoeuvre two cats around in order to clear each level of skulls. Both cats can only move in either horizontal or vertical straight lines until they hit an object. The pink cat, Boxy, cannot destroy skulls and as such has to be used to help aid Moxie, the blue cat, get into positions in which he can smash the skulls. Completing a level results in being awarded 1 to 3 stars, depending on how many moves you take to complete the level. The new levels shown here become unlocked when you've collected all the stars. The additional puzzle layouts don't necessarily introduce anything new to the game, but is a welcome addition to anyone looking for more levels. Version 1.1 is only available from Antonio's itch.io page. I hope you enjoyed this roundup. If you are a game developer, or if you're working on a bit of hardware for the Commodore 64 and want a bit of additional exposure to your project, then feel free to drop me an email. Thank you very much to viewers who have kindly donated to IGN via Kofi. If you would like to be graphically immortalized with your own end of video credit on IGN, then donation options to the channel start from a low rate of 3 Australian dollars. All funds are used to help subsidize the cost of running the IGN platform and bring you videos like this one. Until next time, bye for now.